Hi and welcome to our final video in our data structures module. Um, so let's kick it off looking at dictionaries very briefly. So um, yeah, just like tables and lists, dictionaries are also first class objects in Q. So I think in other languages, they might be known as hash maps, which might help you if you've um, used those before. Um, but our dict operator is uh, our old friend exclamation mark again, which we've seen for keying. So again, on the overloaded glyphs page, if I'm getting confused on my operators, I can go here, reference what it's trying to do. Um, and the one I'm talking about now is this one here, the very first one. So to create a dictionary, I can use that. Um, my left hand side will be my keys of the dictionary and my right hand side will be my values. So if I look this up, um, this is what a dictionary will look like on um, in your console, it'll just be separated by a straight line. If this was a table, obviously, we would see also the horizontal lines. That's how you can tell whether you're looking at a table or a dictionary. Um, I can index into those by using functional notation. So for example, here, I'm passing D and then square brackets and then A. So that, that's, I'm looking up on the key A um, and what that's returning, that should return zero. Um, and then what this is doing is reassigning that value to be two. And then I'll check D again. So first of all, D into A here, I'm checking for my value, which is zero. Then if I rewrite the value of um, A to be two, and then check D again, I'll see this zero has been updated to two. Um, you can also add new keys. So instead of update, it would be the exact same notation as updating an existing key. Um, but if the, if the key doesn't exist, it will add a new record. So now my dictionary has one more element. Um, and with dictionaries, you can also do it vice versa. So for example, if I don't, you know, I'm not sure of my keys, but I want to look up a certain value, I can do D question mark on one, for example, and that will return B. Um, so that's the find operator in here, I believe we're doing a look up here. Um, so that's a very brief uh, explanation of dictionaries. Um, just one final thing before we move on to tables. Um, we can join tables or dictionaries to another dictionary and we did mention this earlier and we would do this using our comma operator. So let's join or create D1. Um, so I can do things like add D to D1 and I can also join D to D1. So if I add D to D1, um, I can see I had A, B, C and D in D. I had A, B, C and D. So I end up with A, B, C and D and you can see two plus five have been added together to give seven. So the B's have been added together. So it's one plus six. And then the new row, which we didn't have before D is just added on. Um, and then if I did a join, um, what would happen would be um, the right hand side would overwrite the left hand side. So for example, here I have A, two, A, five. I see I'm only left with the A, but for the D value where I didn't have, um, that would be, added as a new row. So depending on the result that you would like and the operation or the desired behavior, um, you know, you can use these things. And we're just showing that these are first order data types, similarly to tables, lists and things. Um, and you can do these kind of operations on them, which can be very handy. Um, cool. So the final topic we'll just touch on is tables. We've worked on with tables since the very first video. Um, so we should be fairly familiar with them. What I just want to show is um, if you're creating your own data set. So a lot of the time you um, you may not have a data set. You might just be getting started and you would like to create some sample tables um, or you might have a data set, but you want to create, you know, a very small subset of that, you know, say five or 10 rows. That's something very common developers will do, especially when starting out. And even, you know, later on, it's still it's always much easier to, you know, if you've created some code or some function, apply it over a very small table where you can actually see the impact rather than some big giant data set. Um, so you, a quite a quite common thing would be creating a small mini table for use um, for testing yourself. Um, so this here would be creating a table from a list of dictionaries. So for example, I'm passing in dictionary one and dictionary two, and that autom automatically will turn into a, a table. Um, that's just one way or we can do it. We can also use table notation. I would say this is the most common, probably the way I use it the most. Um, and it's an open and closed round bracket followed by um, square brackets in the middle. And then my first column being A and my second column being B. Um, that would give me an unkey table. Now, if I wanted to key that, I would simply move my A column inside 
my square brackets and that would key my columns in there. So depending on whether I wanted unkeyed or keyed table, I would use this notation. And this is probably, again, the most common. We have links here for much more description that I'm gonna go through, um, but you get the gist, hopefully. And then we have another way and we can create a table from a column dictionary. Um, so instead of creating it from a list of like dictionaries, if we just have one dictionary and we use the keyword flip, um, this will basically transpose. So um, it transposes and you can think of it transposing that line that was, you know, on the um, vertical, it's transposing it to the top. Um, so we can flip from one data structure to a lot and you will see flip probably in use a lot if you're looking at um, pre-existing code and, and a lot of the times it's flipping from, um, it's transposing your data in this way. Um, so just like data or just like dictionaries, we can also add tables together. That's lending to the fact that it's a first order data type. So um, I have two tables here and this is not that helpful because I'm not showing them one by one first. So I've got one table with two columns. A and B, second table, A and B. So before I have A is zero to B is one and three, A is four and five, B is six and seven. And if I just put an add in between them, what happens is KDB understands that I'm trying to add the A's to the A's and the B's to the B's. So, and each index will be added, added to each other. So the first row zero and one will be added to four and six here. So I get four and seven. And then similarly for the second row, um, which can be super useful as well. Um, we're showing here um, tables can be keyed and unkeyed. We did go into this in some detail in the join section, so I won't won't labor the point. Um, and yeah, this is showing that if you wanted to, you can obviously use X key outside of your table definition. That's perfectly fine. And if you wanted to key your tables within the table definition, you can do that too. And that's how you would use the square bracket. So it's up to you. Um, we have these key and value operators, which I didn't mention when we were looking at dictionaries, but I will now. So if we just go back a second and we think about our dictionary D. If we wanted to return all the key values, we would simply run key and it would return ABC. And if I wanted all the values, I would do value on D. Happy days, I get all my values back. Um, and that's very similar to, um, sorry, I haven't defined K yet. That's very similar to tables. So if you have a key table, I can also return the key and the value. Um, so, um, yeah, we're showing obviously between dictionaries and tables, there's a lot of similarities and a lot of similar operations we can perform on both. Um, we have here, we're doing keying the table and then mapping it to the value of K and that would also create um, a key table using our dictionary. Um, and yeah, we're showing here, we can do a lookup on K. So if we've got the K is a one um, column table, um, we can use take here. So we know above K has a value for A um, or a key of A. This will be um, zero and then one. So you see here when we do this um, lookup, we're actually filling in with the one for zero and we're filling in with the three for two, which is our key. Um, so I have flown through that a little bit. We have touched on a lot of it, a lot of it in other sections. Um, and we do have some very helpful exercises at the end of this module, which I'll let you go and do now in your own time. Um, and I'll just to remind you, um, definitely go check out the further reading links throughout this uh, module, as well as the Q from Worlds book. Um, and that will really help your understanding. Um, so thanks very much. And I'll see you in the next module.